Thank you all for coming. My name is Christopher Samiratundo. I'm the director of organizing development and communications at DARE, Direct Action for Rights and Equality. Um, we have some folks here to talk to you about a very important uh, bill that would enable more folks to get access to affordable housing here in Providence. Um, to kick us off, I'm going to introduce Councillor Rachel Miller, who's the sponsor of the ordinance. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you to I and DARE for organizing this event. Um, I also want to do a shout out to Representative Williams and Senator Metz who have been advocating for this issue statewide for many years. Um, and so I am so excited that we're going to be taking up this ordinance tonight. Um, it focuses on closing a policy loophole in Providence and leading the way for the state to do the same. Um, this is an ordinance that is at its simplest form. It's just about basic equity. So we know we're in a housing crisis. We know Providence and statewide access to safe, affordable homes are increasingly out of reach for way too many of us and our neighbors. Um, so this proposal is just like one modest piece of that puzzle. Um, but for those who are affected, it can be a complete game changer. Um, so what this ordinance does is it takes the burden off of our most vulnerable community members by specifying that sources of income like child support, social security, SSI, medical assistance, veterans assistance, and the Federal Housing Choice Voucher Program be treated like any other income by landlords. Um, so uh, Connecticut at, since 1989, Massachusetts since 2006 have had laws like this on the books. Um, many cities in Massachusetts have had it for, for many years longer. Uh, I want to emphasize that the ordinance doesn't take away any tools that landlords use to find a, a good tenant, someone who will be a partner in maintaining the quality of life at the property, so all the screening practices, like referrals and credit checks, interviews, they're all allowable. It just says that these other sources of income can't be the reason a tenant is turned away. Um, so the ordinance covers a lot of populations. Um, but the attention and the public conversation has entirely focused on housing choice vouchers. Um, so over the last several months, I've had people tell me that there's no problem of discrimination in Providence. I've also had people share anecdotal secondhand stories of specific problems with renting to individual voucher holders. And so I just want to share a few facts that, that I've learned from the Providence Housing Authority um, in advance of today. So one, it's true, utilization rates are high in Providence. We're at about 94%. That's 94% of voucher holders who are using their vouchers in Providence. And that's really good news. But there's a story under that, right? I think we can do better. So just under 50% of the vouchers that are used in Providence are concentrated in five neighborhoods, and so this is in decreasing order of the number of vouchers in each neighborhood. We have Elmwood, the West End, Upper South Providence, Wanscott, and Lower South Providence. So when we talk about housing choice, right, and we think about, okay, half of the voucher holders are concentrated in these neighborhoods, we can do better in expanding choice. Um, in a survey that the Providence Housing Authority conducted, 61% of voucher holders reported that prospective landlords turned them away solely because they held a voucher. So that's 61% of voucher holders who had to go to multiple landlords whose landlord who, you know, were otherwise good and solid tenants and could not find a place from the first shot. So I think if we can do better, we should do better. Um, and I just want to close by sharing the experience of uh, Cecile Vega. So on January 6, 2018, Ms. Vega's home on Moodin Street in Olneyville was destroyed by a fire. She described uh, the physical and emotional toll on her personally in trying to find a new home. She had a voucher. Uh, she had to separate from her family. She was physically, mentally, emotionally drained after already suffering the loss of a fire. And she described how over and over again, her Section 8 voucher would not be accepted, even when people didn't advertise it that way. Um, so look, I think we can do better than this for our city's residents, right? Again, I think this is a modest proposal that closes the loop and has a big impact on the people that are affected. So thanks again for hosting this tonight, and I'm looking forward to the discussion tonight. All right.